Hi everybody, my name is Tom. Some of you might know me from the Bowl of Salmon Instagram account. I was never gonna do any watch reviews here on YouTube, but here we are anyway. Today we're gonna have a first look at the Sealander GMT from Christopher Ward. The reason I decided to make this video was that over the course of the weekend, I was looking online to find some videos and I couldn't find any. I also got a lot of questions on Instagram on how this watch wears and what my initial thoughts about it are. This video is not meant to be a technical review, but it might be a good idea just to start with some specifications here. Uh, let's start with the dimensions. The watch comes in at 39 millimeters with a 45.9 lug to lug, and it sits 11.8 millimeters high on the wrist. So in terms of size, this hits the sweet spot of a lot of wrist sizes. I myself have a 17 centimeter wrist. If I have to compare this watch to any other watch in my collection, I would say that it wears practically identical to my Black Bay 58. Uh, to me personally, it feels smaller because of the wide dial. I'm not accustomed to that yet. Uh, other people have commented that it looks bigger on my wrist. When we turn over the watch and it magically reappears back on the bracelet, we can see that Christopher Ward opted for an open case back, which is a really nice thing at this price point. That brings us to the movement. They put in a Salida movement with a GMT complication built on top. It is good for a maximum power reserve of 56 hours. They also engraved the rotor with the Christopher Ward logo and brand name. The star of the show is obviously that orange GMT hand. Okay, we, we might see this one in some other watches before, but Christopher Ward did put a lot of attention into the other hands as well. On the minute and hour hands, they used a mix of both brushed and polished surfaces that give these a different look depending on how the light hits them. The hour hand reveals more details. Um, the tip clearly shows this brushed, almost shaved off triangle area. Under a macro lens, it looks like my skateboard after 50 failed all the attempts, but it doesn't put me off in day-to-day -day wear. Speaking of brand identity, the second hand has that typical trident counterweight that I personally like very much on this watch, because it's another one of those things that makes this watch stand on its own. The tip of the second hand has the same orange color applied that we can see in the rest of the design. Now let's talk about the overall look of the watch. There are two versions of this GMT. There's a black version and there's a white version. I obviously chose the polar model, which features a shiny lacquered white dial. The hour markers on the dial are applied and also have a mix of brushed and polished finishing. Above those indices, we find orange dots that break up the second track that runs around the dial. At the 12 o'clock, we can see the brand name. Some people asked if I mind having another man's name on my wrist, but I'm sure they wouldn't be asking the same question if this was a Lange. So I don't mind. I consider it the brand name and I'm happy they didn't apply to the 9 o'clock like on some other models. At the 6 o'clock position, we find the words automatic GMT printed on the dial, just like the logo is. Underneath, there is an indication of the waterproofing of this watch. You can take this one for a long deep bath of up to 150 meters. At 6 o'clock, we can also find the date window. If you bring everything together on this dial, I think it's perfectly balanced and there's nothing there that puts me off. Okay, onto the bezel then. This is a fixed 24 hour bezel with brushed steel and black lacquer filling. When I first saw the press release pictures, I thought it looked a bit thin, especially if you compare it to you know who, but after seeing it in real life, I have to say they also nailed the proportions with this. The watch has a flat sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating on the inside. The flat sapphire gives the watch a different look than what I'm used to. I'm not sure why, but under certain angles, it makes the inner bezel look really high and it makes the dial sit really deep. It certainly isn't a deal breaker, but to me, it's like the only visual thing that I don't like about this watch. We haven't talked about the bracelet yet. This is just like the icing on top of the cake. The steel bracelet tapers from 20 to 18 millimeters, just enough for comfort while still making it look masculine on the wrist. It features a handy quick release system, so it makes changing straps a breeze. One of the criteria in a watch when I consider purchasing it is that it needs to look good on different straps or on leather. I love my watches to be strap monsters. Christopher Ward offers a range of choices on their website, but I always suggest you getting it on the bracelet and adding an extra strap afterwards. Another awesome feature that just adds to the value for money of this watch is the fact that it has an on-the-fly micro adjustment system. So you don't need any tools to adjust the bracelet when there's a change in weather or you gain some home office weight. I've been trying to avoid the elephant in the room for a while now, but of course there's an obvious reference to the Explorer 2. This one will obviously split the opinions among the WatchFam community. All I can say in that regard is that as soon as you stop comparing it to the Explorer, 
This watch really stands on its own. There is enough there to support that. If you are waitlisting for a Rolex, it might still your appetite while waiting or it will even make you change your mind. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. This was my first watch talk video, so please let me know if I can prove on things. If you have questions, do drop them here or on Instagram. I will try to get back to each and every one of you. I want to do one last shout out to a brilliant watch fam community that has been supporting me from day one. Really guys, thank you very much for joining me here and for sticking around on Instagram day after day. Thanks.